Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about a TFSA beneficiary versus successor holder. Now, in a video not too long ago, in our five TFSA mistakes to avoid, we talked about successor holder and we got a bit of feedback on that. Uh, you know, we mentioned that you have to list your spouse or common law partner as a successor holder in order for them to get the money essentially tax-free into their tax free savings account. And a lot of you fought back and said, no, no, you can use you know form RC240 and roll it over and that kind of stuff. So we want to clarify that because they are they are not the same. You need to list your spouse or common law partner as a successor holder. And we're going to explain why you need to do that in this video. Before we jump into the content, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button below. It takes one second, it costs you nothing, and it really does help get our videos out to more people. And if you enjoy this content, if this type of content really helps you in your retirement and financial planning, hit the thumbs up. Again, it helps get these videos out to more people, and trust me, more Canadians need to learn this content because we see it being done wrong all the time. So hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. Let's jump into the video. So one of the main questions we're getting around successor holders, who can be listed as a successor holder on a tax-free savings account? And there's really only two people. There's a spouse or common law partner, okay? Those are the only people that can be a successor holder for the TFSA. You know, a brother, a parent, a sibling, a cousin, those cannot be a successor holder, only a beneficiary. So if you're looking to name someone outside your spouse or common law partner uh, to take over your TFSA, it has to be a beneficiary. But if you have a spouse or common law partner, you should probably be naming them the beneficiary, but don't use a beneficiary designation, use the successor holder beneficiary designation, okay? The benefits of using a successor holder versus the beneficiary are extreme. So let's go through why you want to list a successor holder versus the beneficiary when it comes to your spouse or common law partner. So when you list your spouse or common law partner as a successor holder, if you were to pass away, they essentially become the new holder of that account. Okay. They get the contribution. Room. Now they have two options. They can keep your account as is. So let's say, you know, Joe and Sally, let's say Joe has a TFSA account and Sally does too, and she passes away and she named Joe as the successor holder. Let's say they're both maxed out, 75,500, okay? Joe could, Joe essentially takes title, becomes the owner of Sally's TFSA account. Now, he can keep them separate, or to keep things simple, he can actually roll her TFSA into his, even though he has no more contribution room, he can roll it over. So very simple, so he takes it over, and then he can you know, amalgamate them, put them into one. Again, so it's a very streamlined process, it's automatic. You know, Joe automatically takes over that account and can get that whole contribution room, okay? So his name essentially becomes the owner of the account, uh, basically the day that she passes away. So naming the accessor holder, when you're, you know, if one spouse were to pass away, the surviving spouse could essentially have two TFSA accounts, or again, they can combine them into one. Either way, the TFSA would rule outside of probate, so there's no probate fees due on that. And again, the surviving spouse doesn't need contribution room to take it over, okay? The other thing too is if you left them separate, let's say Sally's grew from 75,500 to 100,000, and then he wanted to amalgamate them, he could do that because again, he's the owner. They're both his TFSAs. As they grow, he can pull money out or put those two accounts together, and there's no tax consequences to that. Okay, so now let's look at a beneficiary. So let's, just talking about a spouse or common law partner here, if you name your spouse or common law partner as a beneficiary instead of a successor holder, what's the difference? So if you list them as a beneficiary, the TFSA, your TFSA, if you pass away, still uh, avoids probate. So it passes outside of probate, so no probate fees there. So those are the same things, but this is where it gets a bit messier. So your spouse, when you pass away, can essentially take over your TFSA and roll it into their own TFSA, but they have to do it within the rollover period, okay? The rollover period is December 31st, the year after you pass away. So let's say you pass away, you know, in August of 2021, okay? Your spouse would have until December 31st, 2022 to roll your TFSA into their TFSA. Again, you don't need the contribution room to do that. So it can roll over. Now, there's a few huge catches. First off, there's a form that you have to use, form RC240. That will allow you to roll your deceased spouse or TFSA over to your TFSA, but it's not as simple as that. So when that rollover happens using RC240, okay, 
the fair market value cannot be exceeded, which means that you can only roll over any amount that was in the account when your spouse passed away. So let's say, again, your spouse passes away in August of 2021 and the TFSA is worth $50,000, okay? And then, you know, it takes you a while to settle everything in the estate and deal with, more, you know, mourning and all that kind of stuff. And you don't get around with moving the TFSA out until let's say January, February, March of 2022, okay? You're still in that rollover period, so you can still roll it over. But let's say the market's done well. Let's say you, it's gone from 50,000 to 55,000. You can only roll over 50,000 to your TFSA. The other $5,000 is gonna be taxable gain, all right? So very different, right? Successor holder, it can go to 55. Again, all that's tax-free to the surviving spouse. With a beneficiary designation, again, you can roll the amount of their TFSA to your TFSA, right? You don't need the contribution room. So if you've maxed out your contribution in your TFSA and your spouse passes away, you can still, as and you're listed as a beneficiary, you can still roll it over. But if it grows between the time that they pass away and the time that you roll it over, you cannot roll the growth over. It's going to be taxable to you. So be aware of that. So if your spouse was to pass away and you roll their or move their TFSA into yours, again, you need to fill out that form RC240 and you have to fill it out within 30 days of making that contribution. So there's, again, there's some detail and timing around this that you really need to follow. And if you don't you know, file that RC240 form in time, you're going to not uh, get the exempt contribution. It's gonna apply to your contribution room. Again, you may run into over contribution at that point, which creates a penalty of 1% a month. So again, having a beneficiary designation on your spouse or common law partner, it creates a bunch of checklists that you need to follow, which again, when your spouse passes away, you know, following checklists and orders is probably the last thing on your mind. So, you know, just again, just to simplify it, your spouse or common law partner needs to be listed as a successor holder. They can be listed as a beneficiary, but there's no advantage to that. There's huge advantage to successor holders. So um, if you're listing, again, you know, a, a parent, a sibling, a, you know, a niece, a nephew, whoever it is, as a beneficiary, anyone outside of your spouse or common law partner, they need to be listed as a beneficiary. They cannot be a successor holder, okay? So make sure that you look at that, make sure that you create, you know, whoever you want your beneficiary to be. But again, for your spouse or common law partner, make sure to list successor holder. You, you know, again, just to summarize here again, your spouse will take over. Um, if you pass away, your spouse will take over your TFSA. They'll they'll become the new owner of your TFSA and they have time to do what they want. Your TFSA can grow and that taxable income is all tax-free. You know, any growth is tax-free there. Whereas again, a beneficiary, if there's growth after death before you kind of roll over everything and, and take care of it, that's going to be taxable in your spouse's hands, okay? So again, you lose a lot of the benefit. Yes, you can roll it over, but you lose so much of the benefit. So. Just to summarize here, make sure you list your spouse or common law partner successor. Anyone outside spouse or common law partner has to be the beneficiary, okay? So hopefully this helps you out again. RC240 is the form that you have to fill out if you didn't you know, fix your, your beneficiary to successor holder. So hopefully you watch this video, you go back wherever you hold your TFSA accounts, uh, review who you've listed um, as a successor holder, as a beneficiary. If your spouse is listed as a beneficiary, just correct that. Contact whoever your investments are through. Contact them to update to a successor holder over a beneficiary. It's easy to do. It shouldn't take long at all. And it's going to save you a ton of headache, money, taxes, and everything down the road. So make sure you make that change because it will make a big difference in your estate planning, in the surviving spouse, you know, uh, paperwork, headache, all that that they have to take care of uh, when you pass away or for you if your spouse passes away. So again, hopefully this video helped you out, makes you make some changes on your uh beneficiary designation or successor beneficiary designation on your TFSA. Um, thanks for joining us in this video. We'll see you in the next one.